Okay, so I said we'd do little quick. Again, I've got to do these like this because I haven't got David here to hold the recorder. So for fried chicken, I've got five pounds of chicken breasts, which have been sliced into sort of long tenders and uh, soaked in buttermilk. And I soak them in the buttermilk overnight. It tenderizes the chicken and makes it much softer when it's cooked. Then in this bowl here, this is your coating, which is six cups of self-raising flour, or if you watch in America, use cake flour. Then one cup of yellow cornmeal, two tablespoons of each of the following, black pepper, celery salt, oregano, marjoram, sage, salt, onion powder and garlic powder. So we'll do a stop now while I get one on to cook and then you'll see how it cooks. Right, so you're now at this stage. This is what it looks like because you're going to take the chicken from the buttermilk, toss it into the flour, then take it back from the flour to the buttermilk and re-toss in the flour. So technically it's had two coatings and that's what it sort of looks like. And this is a messy job and you've got to keep washing your hands in between every single bit, make some under your nails and everything. But that's what it looks like on the plate. So we're now going to deep fry. You need a pan of hot oil, which I can show you that now cooking away. You need the oil to be hot, um, hot enough to do like French fries. That's about the temperature you're going to do. This doesn't work if you do it in an air fryer or anything else. It must be deep fried. Right. So I've now got the first batch in the hot oil frying away. So it's still, still some on the plate. Um, don't overcrowd the pan because if you do you'll end up in a right mess um, and it all becomes really really sticky and stuck together in one lump but so midway leave it till it really starts to cook don't try to move it if you try to move it in the pan you need really good long tongs um, I use the ones from the pan shop which are fabulous um, don't move it if you tend to move it while it's cooking at first all the coating will actually come off so be careful let's pause again so this is almost ready to come out I've actually turned it over with the tongs so it just makes sure it gets an even fry there the tongs that I use those um, like big pound shop plastic ones or from the dollar store Dollar Tree I actually did buy those at Dollar Tree um, in this in Fort Lauderdale so but I've got some from the pound shop and they're exactly the same so we're gonna once this is cooked you need a rack as you can see I've already had some on it and um, over a tray because you're going to take it from this to drain on a rack and then keep it warm in the oven I'll show you what it looks like when it comes so second batch is in the pan and um, still some on the plate I've still got some in the bowl you might think it's an awful lot of flour but trust me when the last lot goes in there is no of the flour coating left hardly and that is your finished product as you can see crispy golden um, southern fried chicken and the taste is divine so I'll show you in a moment what we're serving it with tonight I serve it with different things at different times but tonight's slightly different than I've done for a while um, and I do keep it in the oven to keep it warm um, between sets obviously so it's all warm back in a moment so now it's on the table as you can see I have served it with the corn casserole, which you'll find on my Facebook page to follow through. Jalapeno and cheddar biscuits. Southern gravy, which is basically a stock and then it's thickened with some of the chicken flour. So you've got the same flavour running through the gravy, which was my dear friend Paula Dean's recipe. And mashed potatoes with lots and lots of butter. So not at all calorific. <laughs> So there you go, and that's the whole fried chicken dinner. And to coin a phrase of my dear friend Paula Dean, cut up a mess of fried chicken and taters, Miss Fox. See you later.